Hi, my name is Claire Young. I'm a family physician from Kelowna, BC, Canada, and I've been traveling since the 1st of January 2018, so just over two and a half years, and we've been traveling in our truck camper, Sherpa. You can see that behind us. So this is our truck. It's a Ram 3500, which we've modified for off-road travel and long-term living. And on the back of it is our camper, which is an XP camper, which is now manufactured by Nimble Vehicles. We're currently in Colombia, and due to the pandemic, we've been unable to travel for the past four months. We spent the first three months in our camper and then finally rented a house here in Quindío. This is my husband James and we're here to answer some questions about what it's like working on the road while you travel. We didn't know what questions they wanted answered so we sent an email to some of our friends and people that follow us on Facebook and Instagram and said hey what, uh, what questions would you have for someone working on the road. So they sent us some emails through and we've got their questions here so I'm going to fire them at you and you can answer them. Maybe okay. I'll jump in a little bit as well. Okay so the first one is what made you decide to travel? Well, um, we moved to Canada from England and at first it was all lovely and we moved for the snow sports. Then we got fed up of the winters and so we decided to buy a travel trailer and every winter for five years we travelled south from BC down to San Diego to spend our winters. And on the last year we went down, we decided that maybe we were going to look at buying something a bit smaller. It was quite big and we couldn't get to lots of the smaller camp places that we were interested in getting to. So we started looking around at what our options were. And that's when I discovered something called overlanding. And one day I phoned James up uh, from work. He was at home. A and fateful day. I asked him, do you want to drive around the world? And after a very brief pause, he said, yes. <laughs> That was kind of it, just one word. <laughs> it was kind of yes, and then oh, what have I let myself into? Um, yeah, we'd been around, we travelled around the world before, haven't we, with um, backpacking? Yeah, when we, I was 18, when I finished high school, before I went to university, and James was about 21. Yeah. And we always wanted to do a long trip again, and now we're doing a really long trip. Yeah, this was our opportunity. Okay, so question number two Did you plan to work from the start? I guess. Did you plan to work from the start of the trip? Yes, I planned to work from the start of the trip, but I didn't actually think it was going to be possible to work throughout the whole trip. So my, in my head, I had an idea that I would be working while we were in the US. And then once we got past um, the US into Mexico, that the connectivity would be too much of an issue, especially for my type of work. And I wouldn't be able to work. But now, two years later, after leaving the US, we're still working and we're in Colombia. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing how easy it is actually to, to get online if you want to get online, and, and how easy it is to make things happen. Um, I planned to work, but my works. Uh, I'm a tr an endurance coach, and I also do uh, some web design as well. So my work's a little bit easier. I'm not forced it to be certain places at certain times and have a certain amount of internet connection. Uh, so I always planned to work and I was hoping that I could continue my work. I didn't realize that it would be quite as easy to continue as it has been, so that's great. Next question. What do people say when they see you working from a camper? Um, well, a lot of people actually think I'm on a boat because it's quite boaty inside uh, the XP camper. Uh, so often they ask me, are you on a boat? And I explain to them, no, we're in our camper and we've driven here from Canada down to wherever we currently are. And they're usually uh, pretty gobsmacked to see what we're doing and hear what we're doing. And even more gobsmacked when I turn the camera around on the computer to show them the view outside and wherever it is that we're doing a clinic from a crazy location. I always, I always feel a little bit guilty, somewhat smug and a bit guilty when you kind of when Claire picks up the computer and kind of shows them out the big window at the back of the camper that we're on a tropical beach or in the middle of a desert or something somewhere. Um, okay, next question. Did you have to make any changes to make traveling while working become a reality? So, yes, it was quite a big change for me because I have full service uh, family practice in a medical clinic. Um, but my transition was gradual, so when we started going south for the winter, I started to dabble in a little bit of telemedicine. And 
when we made the decision to travel, um, and obviously I knew I was going to be doing more telemedicine, I gradually made that transition. I tried things out. I found a company that I was comfortable working with, make sure we knew how all the technology worked, and just gradually transitioned over to doing telemedicine before we left. So we had a really good handle on how things were going to work and how things were going to run. Yeah, I think it wasn't too much of a change for me because um, uh, a lot of the stuff that I do now is similar to what I did at home, just in a, a different location. Um, I think the key is to start the process early, work out what you, to, uh, first of all, have that in mind that you're going to be traveling on the road. And then um, if you have that in mind, when responsibilities or commitments come up, you can kind of say no to them. So that's kind of a little bit far in advance. Um, and then once it gets closer to you wanting to, to work away, away, it's just a case of, um, I think, whatever job you do, can you do it away? And if you can't, what other options are close? What can you pare down? What can you get rid of? If, you're, if, you're work, if you have to work from an office, is there a variation on your job with your employer that you can do on the road? If not, with another employer? If not, is there a variation that... Uh, that's close to the job that you do and I guess most people kind of do that they kind of start off with what they've got and they keep whittling away until it gets to such a point that they can um, head off and do it for me it was a little bit different I used to have a job that I absolutely categorically could not do on the road and I ended up looking for things that I could change into um, that was actually before we decided to travel in a camper I always knew that we were going to be doing something I just wasn't sure what um, so I got rid of the job that I had with a lot of commitment. I learned uh, to do web design. Um, I love triathlon. I was doing some triathlon coaching, so I built that side of the business up. Um, so having it in the back of your mind allows you to make the right decisions moving forward so that when it comes to traveling that you can do it. But for those people who have a job now and want to head out on the road, I think the key thing is exactly what I said find out what your job is if that's the job that you're going to be doing how do you keep whittling that away until it gets to a point where someone says okay yep yeah, that's that's what i can do on the road and then the other thing is that you don't need anywhere near as much money so yeah. you can whittle it away to something much much smaller you live so much cheaper on the roads that uh, it works and it does take i mean there is obviously a compromise you're not going to have a high flying career while you're on the road or very unlikely so what you're really looking at doing is what how much money are you going to be comfortable making get an idea or maybe this something for another uh, video get an idea of how much it's going to cost for you to be out on the road depending on whereabouts you are in the world um, and then work out do i just want to cover costs so i can travel do i want to cover costs and make a little bit more and um, for us, we've kind of got a little bit of both in mind so that um, we can cover our costs while traveling and also save a little bit of money as well. Okay, what jobs suit the nomadic lifestyle? Well, yours, is, yours is one of the hardest, I guess, for maybe. Yeah, I would say definitely, definitely one of the hardest and for a lot of specialties, completely impossible. Um, but now with technology, my job as a family physician is partially possible on the road um, but it's a little bit more difficult just because everything has to be scheduled clinics are pre-arranged i need really good uh, fast internet and i need a fairly professional space to work from so it's slightly trickier yeah but but manageable i think the key thing again is the fact that you just make it work so so uh so that's good for, i mean from my point of view i think what jobs suit the nomadic lifestyle because of the compromises you make and because of some of the more awkward situations like you're on the road you may not be in one place at one time it may be difficult to get online connection anything that's project driven is is great anything where someone says in advance hey I want you to do this job for this money and get it done and then hand me the results back in I don't know next month or whatever deadline they give you um, if you're able to have that kind of job, so something like writing, um, proofreading, uh, graphic design, photography, any of those kind of jobs where you can work away on your own and then hand something back are the, by far the best jobs to do while you're on the road. 
there's lots of variations of that obviously and from there all the way through to someone like Claire that is it's quite awkward trying to make her job work just for scheduling and, and data like she said um, but there's tons of stuff out there it's just a case of either finding what you do or finding something that you want to do learning it and making it happen Anything else to add to that? No, I don't no? think so. Okay, here's a good one. The best place you have worked? Uh, for me, I think there has to be Playa Blanca in Costa Rica. It was this just this absolutely amazing, um, amazing beach in the Osa Peninsula, which is fairly untouched, fairly pristine, and just absolutely teeming with wildlife. And we found this beach, there's no one on it, uh, there was no development whatsoever. And we went swimming in, it's kind of like this um, peninsula bay area, we went swimming there, and there were the turtles, and I'm not joking, there were whales breaching and dolphins jumping, like right outside our camper. And we went for this swim with the dolphins, and we had a quick shower with the outdoor shower, and straight into the camper within like five minutes and started running a clinic and in the sky all the um, all the macaws and the parrots over the top and it was it was absolutely unbelievable <laughs> it was pretty crazy and the camper has this amazing picture window at the back of the camper and it, it's probably I don't know it's like five feet long or something so it's a big five foot window that you can open opens from the it's a top hung window so you can open it from the bottom and have it sticking right up so you just have this great big it feels like you're out on a deck or on a patio somewhere. Like Claire said, there was just turtles, dolphins, whales, macaws. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, for, yeah, it's a highlight for me for sure. But pretty much anywhere, anywhere in a nimble camper that you've ended up is going to be a great place to work. Um, there's just so many places that have blown our minds when we've got there. But Playa Blanca was definitely a highlight. Uh, what is working in the camper like compared to working from home or in an office? I would pretty much say the same but smaller. I mean, you have everything in the camper, so we have as much electricity as we could need. We have a kitchen, we have a toilet, we have a, a fixed permanent seating area which we can both sit at. Um, so other than there being less space, uh, for me everything is pretty much the same. You know, we have heating when it's cold, we run fans when it's hot. Um, so yeah, I would say not that much different. The, the nice thing with Claire's job, the bad thing is the scheduling, she has to be somewhere at a certain time. The nice thing with Claire's job is that she has to be somewhere at a certain time. So as anyone who works from home currently will know, actually starting work is one of the difficult things. So I think um, being in a camper is kind of an extension or a continuation of the change that happens from people who work in an office, they go and work at home. So obviously all of the benefits and the pitfalls of that uh, continue or extend those out a little bit further and that's kind of what you end up with in a camper. So when you work from home, you maybe you don't have some of the office facilities and maybe you, know, you don't have as much of a social interaction. Um, when you go and work in a camper, you have even less facilities. It's even uh, harder to start work, especially when there's a nice, uh, it's a hot, a hot day and there's a beach and a nice warm sea straight outside the, the door. Um, but yeah, I, I always think of if you're in an office, you need to wear a suit. If you're at home, you kind of need to wear your pajamas at least. And in the camper, you're kind of sitting there in your underwear, sweating on a tropical beach. Um, but yeah, there's not too much difference, especially I think that once you get to the size of the Nimble Camper, you're now at a size, like Claire says, it is just a small a small version of an office. You have all of the things, it's just in a smaller space. If you have maybe smaller vehicles, then there's more compromises that need to be made. But yeah, the Nimble Camper's great. It's, it's a mini office on wheels, so perfect. You obviously work online. How do you get connected? So there's two possible ways to get connected and the main way we get connected is by using our data from our phone. So in each country we go to we just buy a local SIM um, and use the data. We do use Wi-Fi sometimes but I tend to find that the data is more reliable and quicker but we have used Wi-Fi at coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, things like that. If it's fast enough we'll use it and save our data. And sometimes um, you end up parking or sometimes you even end up staying somewhere near um, 
near some Wi-Fi. So, for example, if you're staying, end up there's you know it's not always tropical beaches. Sometimes because we're on the road in between cities or in between locations, we may end up staying either in town on a road or uh, in a plaza, uh, in a central central plaza in town or in a gas station or something like that. And if you, when you arrive, uh, go on your phone, check the Wi-Fi um, situation. And if there is Wi-Fi available somewhere, then if you drop in for a coffee, you get the Wi-Fi code, and then you can kind of head back to your camper in the evening that you, you can use that, which is, which is great. But like I said, usually we don't use Wi-Fi, and cell data is a lot more reliable. Um, the next video is gonna be on the stuff that we use to get online. So our computers, uh, st uh, storage, how do we s save stuff, um, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi extender, and things like buying local SIM cards. So keep an eye out for that, and then we'll cover that in the, in the next video. Okay, which vehicles do you feel suit the nomadic worker? I think that depends on what type of work you do, but for me, having obviously a professional job, needing an inside space, a confidential space, I need really something from the size of the nimble vehicle upwards, um, just to give me everything that I need. But depending on your job and depending on the person, you can, you can manage with something smaller. Yeah, we've met people that are happy to pull out a laptop and do five minutes work on the seat of their motorcycle. Um, We've met other people that um, have sleep in their vehicle, uh, as in it's a, an SUV with a mattress in the back, or they have a rooftop tent, and usually they have an awning and some tables and chairs outside, and they might do a little bit of work outside. I think that the more time you spend working, the more comfort and more space that, that you need. Um, and uh, for us, the nimble camper is kind of the, the starting point at which I would want to spend three or four hours doing some work, especially if it's quite sort of laptop or typing or designing intensive. Um, so yeah, so I think that all vehicles suit different types of work. It just depends on what the work is and how long you're actually working. Okay, uh, what's the, I like this question, what's the strangest place you've worked? There have been a few, <laughs> there have definitely been a few. There has. Um, so one place I think um, was La Guajira in Colombia. So that's the kind of real northern point of Colombia and the most northern point of, um, of South America. And we pulled up in this tiny little town, I think called Los Camarones. And where we were going to stay, there was no Wi-Fi or there was no cell service, so we had to drive far enough so we could find, you know, catch on to some cell service to run the clinic. And we ended up in this little spit of land, um, like it was really sandy up there, it was a little spit of land and it was obviously on this like walkway or path to these little wooden shacks where the Waiu tribe, one of the, they don't have many tribes here, but one of the tribes that live in northern Colombia, and they're sort of walking past us in these very, very basic clothes, you know, sometimes with no shoes on, with sort of wooden baskets of fish, that it was a fishing community, um, that they caught while we are in this high-tech, futuristic camper running futuristic medical clinics to Canada from Colombia and it was this really weird sort of juxtaposition of crazy technology against thousands of years old traditions. But it's really weird one of the great things of traveling is that kind of connection that you get just with people at the end of the day we're all human beings and and they're walking past waving and we're waving and saying hi and having a having a chat and they're we're kind of looking at them and so, say, wow, that's amazing and that's really cool. And they're looking at us thinking the same thing uh, or maybe thinking it's a bit weird. But, but either way, yeah, it was a, it was a strange place to, uh, it was a slightly strange place to, to end up. Um, I wasn't sure if the sea was going to come in and end up with a swamp, but it didn't. So that was, that was all good. Um, one of the strange places, it's not that strange, I guess it's kind of a, uh, one of the, I guess an example of finding a camp, camp spot in where you don't expect to find camp spots. We've been out for a run one morning and we saw a big sign saying lots available and it was in a, a place called place called Mesa de los Santos um, and it was basically lots available and we knew that there was a canyon nearby so we ended up just running up this road. It was completely undeveloped subdivision and they'd marked out the lots 
but it was right on the edge of the canyon with these amazing views. Um, so there, yeah, so that we went back to where we were staying, grabbed the camper, told a couple of our friends where we were going and we kind of headed off down there. We gave the number on the billboard a ring and said, is it okay to stay there? And they, they said, preliminary, preliminarily, at first, they, <laughs> at first they said yes. So we went up, camped up there. Uh, it was all great the first night. And then uh, eventually they came back and said, oh, the, the, some of the lots are, are bought and we don't really want to have people staying up there. So we ended up leaving. But yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing camp spot for a couple of nights and a good example of the fact that if you are out in the camp, just keep an eye out for places to stay because you'll find amazing locations in the, in the strangest of places. Um, Oh, what about the time on the when we went to Holbosch for? Oh, so we were going to leave the camper uh, for a few days. We were going to this island off of um, Mexico, so we pulled up in this town, which was a little town, but you know, a reasonable sized town, not out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but when we got there, the cell tower they had a fault with it. It's been down for like a month, so there was no cell service. And I had a clinic booked as usual in about like 10 minutes before um, I had to start and we just arrived. So we started running around the town asking people, you know, where is their Wi Fi? We need some Wi Fi. And someone basically said, there's Wi Fi at the end of the pier where the boats leave from. So I rushed up to the end of the pier and where the boats are leaving from, there was a little ticket sales office and free Wi Fi there. And I literally had to hop from seat to seat, trying to keep my back against a, a board so it looked like uh, you couldn't see people walking around me, trying to get enough Wi-Fi and cell signal, or not cell signal, but Wi-Fi signal and fast enough to see patients. And the more people that arrived at the end of the pier to take a boat and logged on to the, the Wi-Fi, the slower and slower the cell service, or not the cell service, the Wi-Fi got, and it was it was absolute nightmare. <laughs> uh, highly unprofessional, um, but uh, I pulled it off. Yeah, it may be. It was one of the times I think that it would have looked a slightly less professional clinic when Claire's sitting there seeing patients online, and there's ticket prices <laughs> to various different islands behind her. I got a I got a text on the phone saying, uh, "Get a rum and coke ready. I'm going to need one at the end of this clinic." Um, so yeah, that was some strange places worked. So the last question, can I come and work with you? Yep, you can. Just need to get hold of Nimble, book yourself a camper, drive south around 40,000 kilometers and uh, come and join us. We'd love to see you. So that's it. That's all our questions. Thanks very much for watching. Um, like we mentioned, we're going to have another um, video and the next one's going to be on the kind of stuff that we use and the stuff that makes life a little bit easier for us when we are working on the road so keep your eyes out for that and uh yeah we'll speak to you soon take care bye bye